what I chose to learn with you is an idea that I've been um, working on for, I think, at least 20 years. It started when I was in the Shir Aleph, and, and it's not that every year I give this year, but every other year, let's say. And as you will see, at the end of this year, I'm going to ask you what, what is the meaning of what we've learned? Because uh, before I will offer my ideas, I'm, I'm looking for further understanding. We'll do two stages. We'll work by descriptive work, uh, understanding what's written in the Torah regarding um, the parashiot, which are parashiot, which are really not easy to handle and are very hard to understand and to, uh, and to hold in our minds. So we'll start by working on that. And in the end, we'll try to understand uh, meaning. So before, before I'll share with you my screen, you have my source sheet. Uh, I wanna explain a little bit about myself and, and what are the tools that help me uh, to learn these parashiot and to, and to find this, uh, this new meaning that I've seen in the, in the parashot of the Mishkan and Big Day Kuhuna. So uh, I am uh, a rabbinit. I teach uh, uh, halacha and uh, gemara and Tanakh and Machshava, but I'm also an artist. I'm a, a graduate of Betel Academy and, uh, and I, uh, uh, I show exhibits. I'm a plastic artist. And before I was a plastic artist, I also learned art. And I was learning Torah and I was learning art and I was learning philosophy and many different things. And, and, I, and I realized that, that my art studies also already in high school or maybe the, my art view <laughs> helped me to try to understand these parashiot in a different way. So, so first, just let, let's look at the problem. Let's just describe the problem. We have four parashiot which I think are considered very boring. Um, I'll, I'll, give, uh, I'll describe to you a situation, an interesting situation that, that I saw how boring they are considered. Uh, my grandmother, Alea Shalom, passed away in uh, Adar, 22 of Adar, and that was uh, Parashat Pekudei. And my uncle, which is a Tamil Chacham, was not learning Torah during the Shiva, but he could learn uh, Parashat Shavua, Shnai Mikra Vechat Targum. And there's barely any Rashi on this parsha because we, we've been there. <laughs> like we, we, we listened to Trumat Tzaveh. And now we're in Vayakel Bekudeh. So, 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 so we're going over uh, material that we've already seen. The Torah is repeating itself. Now, of course, there are nuances. I'm not saying. First of all, it's repetitive. So that's one problem. I will not deal with that problem of repetitivity. I once asked uh, Niri Samet, Dr. Niri Samet, uh, I don't know if, if you know her about this, and she said, uh, yeah, Al, this is how um, uh, Tanakh poetry is written. You have Trumat Tzaveh, in the middle you have Kitisa, and then you have uh, Kelpe Kudei, it's a chiastic uh, um, a build. And, and, and when you're doing poetry uh, in Tanakh, that's what it looks like. So that was her answer. And, and right now I don't have answers to that question, why is it repeated? in such depth. And there are all kinds of answers, but, but still I think there's a bigger question. Even if these parasha would be written once, they're very, very hard to follow. There are many different details uh, dealing with uh, materials and sizes and positions. And obviously when I'm reading these parasha, I am supposed to use um, my visual mind. I'm supposed to imagine what it is I'm seeing. Otherwise, I cannot understand what I'm, write, what I'm reading. Now, I am aware that as uh, people have uh, learning disabilities and it's hard for some people to learn math, some, it's hard for some people to learn languages. For some people, they just don't have that visual chip. It's like they read and, 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 and they don't get what's happening. But I think even people who do have visual chips, it's, it's, it's just hard to get into these details. It's, it's, it's very, very detailed and very confusing. But I realized uh, with my chavruta, which, is all, which was also an art student, that, that we have to imagine. And because of this need to imagine, I know there are many books that have been written that, and Machon HaMikdash, trying to build uh, the Mishkan to show us what it looks like. And I'm sharing with you my feeling that whenever I saw these uh, pictures or these things, I always felt this is not what, what I'm supposed to do with this parashio. Uh, usually, uh, 
all, all these photos and, and, and things looked ugly to me. I felt, is this how Ben Mikdash looks? No, something's not working. So, so, so I am talking about using my visual mind, but I'm not, we're not gonna build uh, the Mishkan now. Uh, and, and we're not gonna look, at, you, you won't see any pictures. We will be using the Psukim and we'll be listening and trying to understand what kind of, of um, architecture and clothing are being described. And, and, and I'll, I'll just say one more thing. If I would have been alive when Beda Mikdash or at the Mishkan, I would see this. I'm sure as an artist, I would have understood many, many things just by looking. And now I can't see, so, so I'm like, I'm blind. I'm trying to see. I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure I would have deeper understanding. So, so, so I'm going halfway, Anava. <laughs> uh, I, I'm trying to look through my blindness. You spoke about Yitzhak's blindness in the, in the year before, or Rav Yitzhak Blau. So, so I feel I am blind, but, but I think I, I, I can try. So that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to listen. We're going to try to imagine. And again, we're not going to draw. We're not going to take pictures. And I am going to try to show you uh, what happened when I started to look at the Psukim in this way. Okay, so before we continue, just uh, questions regarding this. Have you ever tried to understand these parshiot? Did you ever notice something in, in, in the way these things are built? Okay, so, 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 so let's try. Now, th this is really, I don't know why I even tried to understand this. You know, I would read, maybe because it's for parshiot. Um, I have a problem. My writing in English is horrible. I can write it in Hebrew. <laughs> There's somebody who's a good English re a writer who can, uh, yeah. Yeah, why, why should it be so detailed? It's, tr it's true. It was one time. We're, we're not supposed to rebuild this. So what's the story? Okay, so d d details. Um, the French philosophers say that truth is in the details. So, 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 so I hope to unravel some truth, Bezra Hashem. Okay. Uh, what do you mean? Is it, is it like art? I didn't understand the question. What is art is a very big question. Ah. <laughs> Why is it not like art? What, what, what is art? When I speak of art, I mean that, that, that when there's something made in physical, it's not there to be only physical, it's there to, to, to say something spiritual. I disagree. Um, being an artist, we think a lot, especially modern artists. Uh, but, but, but not only modern artists. Artists are not intuitive. There is uh, a, a special uh, group of intuitive art, but most artists are very, very thoughtful and they take deep consideration to what they do and they do and they try and they redo. And at least God, I'm sure is, he's that kind of artist. He's a modern artist or a postmodern artist. I don't know, but, but he's very thoughtful. It's not, it's not uh, intuitive. It, it, it didn't just happen. There, there's thought behind everything. At least uh, maybe at a different time, we can, we can actually uh, learn art together. But uh, I'm just trying to learn art, but using uh, these parashot. Um, but artists are very thoughtful and, and, and uh, sophisticated people many times. Sometimes they, they don't know how to explain their thoughts. That's true. Uh, they might be bad in language. I'm very lucky to be able to speak and also to do art. So that's rare maybe but uh, artists are very thoughtful. Okay, so um, you can look at your source sheet, but I, what I did is just, I put the source sheet on, uh, on PowerPoint to make it uh, easier to, to follow. So I, the first thing I wanna notice is that uh, there are many, many uh, Safruti, um, all kinds of connections between the Kalim and the Bgadim. As I call this year, Ketzurat Abayit Uparochet Ha'edut Mar'e Kohen. That's from uh, what we say in Yom Kippur. And what's stated here is that the clothes of the Kohen are connected somehow 
to the way that the house is built. And if we'll put this in mind, and I'll follow through with this thread of thought, I can prove that different gadim have different uh, connections to areas in Bet HaMikdash and in the Mishkan. So since we are working with the Psukim, we are not working with Bet HaMikdash, we're working with the Mishkan. And I wanna try to build connections between specific clothes and uh, Kaylee. So the first uh, couple I wanna work on as Aron Haedud and Choshen HaMishpat. I wanna show you that Aron Haedud and Choshen HaMishpat are connected and they're mirroring one another in a sense. And we'll look at this physically and also the words that the Torah chose to describe and also other uh, details regarding these two elements, Choshen Mishpat and Aron Haedud. So let's start. Both Aron Haedud and Choshen HaMishpat are kalim that have something inside of them. I call that hakbalat uh, tifkudit. They do, they're, they're there to do a similar act. Both of them are there to encompass something else. Aron ha'edut ve'la'aron titen et ha'edut asher eten elecha. Listen to the words, ve'el ha'aron titen. So after we have the aron, Moshe needs to put inside the Aaron what? The Eidus. So the Aaron is the house of the Eidus. A very, very similar pasuk regarding Choshen Mishpat. Venatata el Choshen Mishpat et ha'orim ve'et ha'tumim. So Moshe has to do a similar act. He's putting something inside the Aaron and inside the Choshen Mishpat and using the same wording. Ve'el ha'aron titen venatata el Choshen Mishpat. And when Moshe does this, it's also described the same way. So the connection between the Arim Tumim and the Edus is a very, very strong connection. Why? Because both Arim Tumim and both the Edut inside the Aron do something to the Kli. Let's see. The minute we have inside the Aron, Ruchot Abrit, the Edus, the Aron is not only a house for the Edus, it's a place where God talks to Moshe because of the Edus that is there inside. So the Aron is just, it's like an animated um, thing. Uh, it, it's, it's not alive that you put inside it the, the Edus and then, and then it suddenly functions. And the function is, talking to the Kadosh Baruch Hu, and Kadosh Baruch Hu talking back to us. Choshen HaMishpat is exactly the same way. Choshen HaMishpat is not just something beautiful that the, that, that the Aron HaKohen is wearing on his heart. It's a way of communication. That's that's why we need the Arim Tumi. It's a way of connecting and conversation, actually telling uh, the Am what to do. The Goral, the many questions that you see later in the Navi are asked. And here we see that Shaul is trying to communicate to God. So we see that the Urim is another way to talk to God. So there is a very, very strong connection between the, uh, uh, the Aron and the Choshen, both of them are these tools that are that are animated by something that's put inside of them. And what they do is connection and speech with the Kadosh Baruch Hu to tell us what to do. Uh, we are learning Tanakh, but, but I want to show you that, uh, of course, uh, in the Gemara, uh, uh, in Yoma, you see uh, Yoma and Sota, you see that there are many, many uh, other connections between these two. The Gemara in Yoma asks, Mikdash Sheni Mi Hava Arun. And this, and uh, that, that uh, we all know that Beit Hamikdash Hashani, there was no Aron, there was there was just uh, the uh, Even Ashtia, right? There's nothing there. When you bring the Ketorah in, you bring it into nothing. And there was a different Kli that takes the position of the Aron. That's the Menorah. The Menorah to Mikdash became very, very, very meaningful in Beit Shani, but the Aron is not there. It disappeared. But not only the Aron disappeared. That's very famous that the Aron disappeared. In the Gemara Sota Memchet Amud Bet says the Braitza, Mishcharav, Beit HaMikdash HaRishon, Batlu, Arei Migrash, Upasku Urim Betumim. So it's not only that the Aron Abit disappeared, also the Urim Betumim 
stopped working. So that's another connection between these two Kaylee. So what we did up to now is, is just to understand these Kaylee are connected. Now let's use our artistic eyes and see that also physically they look the same and they are connected physically. So uh, if we read the Pesukim on the Aron, uh, there are four tabaot zahav in the Aron, right? ויצקת לו ארבע טבעות זהב, ונתת על ארבע פעמותיו, ושתי טבעות על צלוע אחת, ושתי טבעות על צלוע שנית. Now listen to the description of the חושן. ועשית על החושן שתי טבעות זהב, ונתת את שתי הטבעות על שתי קצות החושן, ונתת את שתי אבותות הזהב על שתי הטבעות על קצות החושן, ואת שתי הקצוות, שתי האבותות תיתן על שתי משבצות, ונתת על כתפות האפוד אל מול פניו. The אפוד doesn't have only two connections, it has four. And if you read these פסוקים, one next to the other, you see that they're mirroring one another. Let's continue. Ve'eveta et abadim batabat al tzalot ha'aron, aset et ha'aron bahem. The tabaot of the ha'aron, you must have the badim inside of them. And what happens to the ephod? Ve'asit ha'shte tabaot za'a, ve'samta otam ha'shte kzot ha'choshen ha'sfato el ever ha'ephod ba'ita, ve'yichesu et ha'choshen mitabaot av el tabaot ha'ephod be'ptil techelet, liyot al cheshev ha'ephod. Also, the ephod has to be connected to another cleat, to something that is moving. And here is a very, very meaningful connection. The parshanim uh, say, also it's in the Torah Shabbat Pei, in the Gemara, uh, that you're not allowed to take the badim out of the aron, all the other kalim, you can put them down, you can take the badim out. The aron, the badim have to be connected to the aron. Part of that is the aron is always on the move. It can always move it, it's never static. Choshen is exactly the same thing. It's always connected, it's always moving. It can never be put on the side and lo yizach velo yasu are two loving that are connected to each other. Here you see it in Yoma. מסכת יומא אמר רבי אלעזר, המזיח החושן מעל האפוד והמסיר בדי אהרון לוקה, שנאמר לא יזך ולא יסור. In case we didn't realize, it's the same love. לא יזך ולא יסור. The deep meaning of these two things is that the חושן is functioning exactly like the אהרון. If the אהרון always has to be ready on the move, the חושן is exactly the same thing. So we saw that the אהרון and the חושן are both things that encompass something else, the אהרון and the אהרון ותומים. We saw that the אהרון and the אהרון ותומים are creating these two um, things to become, uh, I don't know, a cell phone, a communication of the Kaddish Baruch Hu. And also we see they both have tabaot, but their tabaot is, are different from all the other kelim in the Mishkan. Lo yizach velo yasu, the same love for the Aron and for the Choshen. And if I look at these two things, they look very similar. Again, I'm using my artistic mind. Both of them are built from two parts. There's the uh, Aron there is one thing. And then on top of the Aron, you have the Kaporet. The same thing, the Choshen, is built out of cloth, which is a double cloth, closed. And then there's something on top of it. The Choshen, the, the um, Avanim of the Choshen. It's a very, very similar way of creating uh, um, a tool. Okay, the tool is built out of two parts, and the second part is something decorative, where God talks through it, right between the proving God speaks, and through the otiot, which are shining on the, the avanim, that's where God talks, but inside, hidden, that's where you have uh, the edus and the vitumim. This is very, very similar. I call that dimyon tsurani. If, if, you, if you look at it in your artistic eye, they look the same. They, they, they are built in the same fashion. Okay, so I don't know if I convinced you. Did I convince you that these two are connected? That the Aron and the Choshen are actually, in some sense, the same thing, the same idea, with two different variations on them. The Aron and the Choshen are the same thing. <laughs> I, I, I think it's very convincing, <laughs> but uh, uh, did you ever notice this before? When I first saw it, I was amazed. Okay, so 
listen, th th this is easy. Let's move. Wait, I'm not sure I'm missing the chat. Hold on, I'm opening my chat. I'm sorry. Uh, now the chat is open, so I will see more what, what you're saying. Okay. So 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 I'll continue to, to the next point. Where where's the chat again? I want it to be open by me. Trying again. Hold on. Okay. Here I have the chat in front of me. So let's move to the next pair. This pair is a little bit more surprising, but I think it's still very convincing. I want to look at the Tzisa Zahav and Mishbacha Zahav. And I think both of them have also similar connections like we saw between the Choshen and uh, the Eifod. So, first of all, where are they positioned? Let's see, the Tzitz, where is it positioned? There is a special, an exact uh, uh, description of where it has to be. You put the mitznefet, which is the head of the Kohen Gadol, on his head. Vayasim, oh, I'm taking you down, hold on. Vayasim ala mitznefet el mul panav, et tzitz hazahav, nezer hakodesh, kasher tziva Adonai et Moshe. So, where do you put the tzitz? El mul panav, et tzitz hazahav, nezer hakodesh. Okay? Where do you put the Mizbech HaZahav? Vayasim et Mizbech HaZahav Be'oel Mo'ed Lifnei HaParuchet. So if I have the tzitz over here, it has to be here on my Metzach, El Mul Panav. Where is it related to the Choshen? It's right on top of the Choshen. Choshen is here, this is where the tzitz is. That's okay, because the tzitz is on the, the Aaron's head and, and the Choshen is on his heart. So that's not very interesting. What's interesting is that Mizbeach HaZahav has to be in a specific place, Lifnei HaParochet. So Mizbeach HaZahav cannot be, you have, you have Kodesh HaKodeshim, you have the Shulchan and the Menorah. Where do you put Mizbeach HaZahav? You have to, to, you can't see the Aron, but you have to make sure that the Mizbeach HaZahav is exactly on the same line as the Aron. I'm continuing. We, I, I'm claiming that they have the same position. We'll see this in, in a minute in a better way. But let's see also what, what are they doing? Why do we have Mizbech HaZahav in Bet HaMikdash and the Mishkan? And why do we have Tzitz HaZahav? Why is Aaron Akoyim wearing the Tzitz? So says the Torah, Mizbech HaZahav, Vayitzei la Mizbech asher lifnei Hashem v'chiper alav v'tiyarov v'kitcho mitumot bnei Yisrael. So we're going to read this soon in uh, um, uh, Yom Kippur. We know that Mizbech HaZahav is one of the kelim that has to go kapara. All, all of the kelim have, have to have blood on them to clean them. But Mizbech HaZahav says in Vayikra, So here we learn that the Mizbech HaZahav is the kli that holds the tumot of Bnei Israel. What's this? Bnei Israel go to the Mikdash. Sometimes they're tamid and they don't know. How come the Mikdash is not ruined? Because Mizbech HaZahav keeps all the tumot. It's like a, a battery, right? It keeps all the tumot. And then once a year, you clean it. And then you recharge it. And you go again. So that's why we have Mizbech HaZahav. It's one of the reasons we have Mizbech HaZahav. It's there to hold our tumot in the meantime. Why do we have Tzitzah Zahav? Let's see in Shemot. V'hayal metzach Aaron v'nasa Aaron et avon ha-kodashim asher yakdishu b'nei Yisrael. There is another oven that could be. Maybe somebody came into the Mikdash in Tumah and maybe somebody was being, doing a korban wrong. So the Tzitz deals with the korbanot and the Mizbech deals with the Tumah. These are two batteries. One battery, well, cleansing battery, okay? Air cleansing is, is on the head of, the, of Aaron and the other one is there static and the Mizbech. Um, what else? Do these two things do? So let's see. 
מזבח הזהב, וזה מזבח עבודה כתורת. והכתיר עליו הארון קטורת סמים בבוקר בבוקר, והטיבו את הנרות יקטירנה. Every morning, בבוקר בבוקר, early in the morning, הארון is מקטיר, is putting the כתורת on מזבח הזהב. ובעלות הארון את הנרות בין הערביים, יקטירנה קטורת תמיד. There is another כתורת בין הערביים. The קורבן of the תמיד is not only uh, שני כבשים, it's not, it's not only קורבן of תמיד, it's also קטורת תמיד. וכיפר אהרון על קרנותיו אחת בשנה. And once a year you're doing this כפרה that we just saw. If we read what the Torah has to say about the tzitz, we see something very surprising. והיה על מצח אהרון, ונעשה אהרון את אהרון הקודשים אשר הקדישו בני ישראל לכל מתנות קודשיהם. We saw this before. Uh, the tzitz is on the מצח אהרון. Why? Because it has to, to hold all the avonot of the kodashim. There are many problems in the kurbanot. So that's what the tzitz does. It holds these avonot. Vehayal mitzchot tamid. Why do I have to say tamid? I, I, all the clothes I have to do, I, I have to do tamid. Other clothes, we don't have the statement tamid. Tamid is only on the tzitz. The tzitz has to be tamid. So we have tamid. of Ben Arbaim, and we see there's also a, a part of Aharon's Bredim, which is Tamid. Only the Tzitz is Tamid. Let's go to another point. Wait, no, th this is everything together. I, 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 before I continue, I, I, I want to finish this. So we have the Tzitz and the Mizbech HaZahav. They do very similar things. There are batteries that cleanse problems that Bnei Israel have with being close to the Mishkan, either the Korbanot or the Tumot. Both of them are Tamid, and both of them are connected somehow where they're positioned to the Choshen or the Aron that we saw that are connected to one another. And of course, something almost stupid, they're both called HaZahav. Tzitz hazahav, mizbach hazahav. That's how they are called. They're called after the material they made from. And there are the two kalim, which we have zahav in them. And, and, and they're called after the zahav. So I just want to see these two pairs that we saw. We saw Aron and Choshen, I convinced you, that are connected. I tried to convince you that also Mizbech and Tzitz are connected. So I, I would like to know if I, if I did a good job. I said about Zahav, talked about Tamid, I talked about their, um, their facilities and, and where they're positioned. So I don't know what grade you give to this uh, uh, Tiun, but uh, the Tamid really convinced me and the Zahav convinced me. And then when I, when I saw that they do a similar things, I said, okay, maybe they are also the same Kli in two different manners. So this is where we start. And now I want to try to, to look at how the Mishkan looks if, if, if we draw it in a very rough way. OK, again, it's not pictures, but it is a sketch. OK, so here is my sketch. On the right, you have a rough sketch of Bet HaMikdash. And on the left, you have a very rough sketch of Aaron Kohen. So if I look down, I see, why, why did I put it looking down? Well, is this the right way to, to draw this? Because usually, uh, how do we build a map? The, uh, we look at Tzafon, right? And uh, we look up north and then south is down. So here, I, I changed it. We have the Mizbeach. And we have the Aron. Why did I put this this way? Stum. But I think this is not a right way to put it. Why? Because maps uh, in the Tanakh, how are they built? You have to look at the Mizrach, right? You start from the Mizrach, and then you go down to the Marav. Mizrach is up. So that's how I built this. The Aron is by Marav. So the Mizbeach is Mizrach, and then Juchan Menorah are Tzafon the Rom. So I have the Mizbech and the Mizrach because that's the maps of the Torah. So that's why he's up front, and I have the Aron down here. And here I'm doing Aron Kohen. so the head obviously has to be first, right? I won't turn him upside down. And the Choshen is down here, 
And I have on the Choshen also two Avanim, which is part of what Aaron Akoyan wears. So if I'm looking at this, I can see also a visual connection between the Mizbeach Aaron and the two Avanim. Mizbeach is like the Tzitz, Aaron is like the Choshen, and the two Kruvim are like the two Avnei Hashoam. The two Kruvim are standing on the sides of the Aaron, and the two Avanim are standing here on Aaron's body. So that's what I thought at first when I looked at this. I said, hey, Aaron Kohen is like the Mishkan, but upside down. Um, I, I have to turn him on his head so it will work, right? So maybe I don't have to turn on his head. It is exactly the same. The tzitz is up here and the mizbech is up here. Wonderful. And again, I have ma'arav mizrach. Also, I have the shulchan menorah and kruv and kruv. And I have evan and evan. And I have the other part, which is the mizbech and the aron, which have to be one in front of the other, as we saw. And the tzitz and the chashen obviously create that because they have to be one in front of the other. This is the metzach and this is the leif. So what I did up till now is that I showed two connections and now I looked, at, I looked at it from above. And I see it's not only a connection between specific parts, it also creates a very, very similar map of the Mishkan and of Aron HaKohen. Aron HaKohen is wearing a map of the Mishkan on his body. So, I have just one problem here, that I put the Aron down here and the Aron is on the bottom. And that doesn't feel right because I'm supposed to look at the Aron. So if, if I go according to how people in Beit HaMikdash viewed the Aron, they didn't see them him as bottom. That's true. When you draw a map, that's how it looks. But if I'm now in the Mishkan and I'm now in Beit HaMikdash and I'm walking into the Azara and I'm walking into the Kodesh, what do I meet first? I meet the Mizbech first, and only then I meet the Aron. So maybe this is true if I'm talking about maps, but how people viewed us, how people saw Aron and how people met with Kodesh and Kodesh Kodeshim, this is the right way. Because as a person, I walk in to the Kodesh, I meet first the Mizbech, then I see Shulchan Menorah, I go into Kodesh Kodeshim from Aron HaKohen, and then, only then I see the Aron. So, as far as existentially, how do I view, how do I meet with the Kodesh? I start with the Mizbeach. And when I meet Aaron Kohen, the first thing I see is the Tzitz. It's not the Tzitz, it's the Choshen. That's the first thing. This is something very interesting, that the Aaron is something that is very, very um, mis uh, mystery. You don't see it usually. Nobody sees it. Only Aaron Kohen and people who take care of it can, can, can go inside and see the Aaron. But the Choshen, when you meet the Kohen Gadol, it's the first thing you see, it's in your face, in everyone's face. So I'm trying this claim that th these are the same things. Aaron Kohen is a map of the Kodesh, but an upside down map. In what way is it upside down? The thing that is most secret in the Mishkan is the one that's most in your face in Aaron Kohen. So I want to show you that this has uh, proof in the psukim. This is not just uh, something that, 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 that I, I, at first I thought about it, but then I saw that the psukim are actually proving this, this statement. So how will I prove this? Let's move to clothing. Up till now we did um, Kalim, right? Zahav, Tzitzah Zahav, Mitzbacha Zahav, Kaporet, Choshen, now I want to look at the badim, the cloth. What are the different badim of Aaron Kohen are made of? And what are the badim, what are the cloths that the Mishkan is made of? So I'm continuing. In the Mishkan, what is the deepest, what is the most secret, what is the thing that we can't see in the Mishkan? Maaseh Choshev. Remember who, who asked about Maaseh Choshev? Uh, right, around the Kodesh Kodashim, we have Maaseh Choshev, ve'et ha-mishkan ta'aseh eser iriot shesh mushzar, t'chelet v'argaman tolat shani kruvim, Maaseh Choshev ta'aseh otam, that's the inner part of the mishkan, and the parochet, which is covering 
and encompassing. The Aron is also מעשה חושב, ועשית פה אוכל תכלת וארגמן, תולעת שני, שש מוסדר, מעשה חושב קרובים. What's מעשה חושב? The Pashanim say that you see the same thing on both sides, and it's a picture of the Kruvim on both sides. Let's look at what is the Choshen build of. The Choshen we saw, it's a cloth closed with, with the Orim Betumim, but now the Choshen, as we learned, is connected always to the Efod. It's never, never on its own. And what is the Efod made of? V'asuit Efod, Zahav Tchelet V'agaman Tulat Shani, Shesh Mushzar, Ma'aseh Choshev. The same cloth that is there to cover Kodesh HaKodeshim is the cloth that is just the background of the Choshev. So, let's see. We saw that the most inner part of the Choshev, the Kisuyam Pnimiyim, is the most outer part Excuse me, the inner part in Oil Moed is the most outer part in the Eifod. What I want to show you is that this is true all the way through. What is most inner in uh, Oil Moed will be the most outer in, Be in the Big Day Aron Kohen and vice versa. So I'm looking with the Psukim, going one after the other. Let's go to the outer part. Why do we need a mikseh for the mishkan? Says the Ibn Ezra, because there's rain sometimes in the desert. That's why I need mikseh. Maybe there's sand in the desert. I don't need a mikseh because I need it as part of the mishkan. It's, it's just a way to protect it. What are the Kohanim wearing underneath their clothes that we don't see? They wear mikhnasayim. Why do we wear mikhnasayim? Says in Shmot, but I said, why? Lechasat besar erva. Again, it's, it, 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 it's, it's something that is not part of the Bgadim. It's just something functional. I need to be mechased erva. I, I need to cover the, the Mishkan from rain. That's why I have these clothes. So the most inner thing is what we don't see in Oil Moed. What we see when we go to, to Oil Moed, we see the Smichseh. Why is it there only to protect? But that's the first cloth that we see. When we see the Kohen Gadol, what we meet is the Efod, Maaseh Choshev, and what's underneath, we'll never see it, the Michnasayim. Why are the Michnasayim there? To protect from the Erva. Something technical. Okay, this is not very exciting, but the next two are very exciting. When I saw these two other parts, I was, uh, I was sure I'm right. Uh, wait, I, ha I have one missing. I have to read it in, in the Torah. I'll tell from the outside, you, have, you, you can check me, but this is true. The Arona Kohen has also uh, a Chagora, right? All the Kohanim have something around their waist. Uh, and we, we know that also Hasidim have a girdle, right? To keep their heart from their, from, from their uh, feet. That's why you have the girdle. And, 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 and that's what the Kohanim had also. But the Kohen's girdle is not made out of Maaseh Choshev. It is made out of Ma'aser Okim. And if you go to the Mishkan, you also have Ma'aser Okim. You know what's Ma'aser Okim in the Mishkan? The Masach Shar HaChatzer is Ma'aser Okim. Also in the Mishkan, you have something that the whole idea of it is separation, the separation between the Kodesh and the Chol. And it's not Ma'aser Choshev, it's Ma'aser Okim. So the Avnet is made out of the same material that the Masach of Oil Moed is made of. Again, the inner thing is made Maseh Choshev, the Masach and the Avnet are made Maseh Rokim. So the only thing we're missing is the Me'il. Remember the, the Kohen Gadol is wearing a Me'il and the Me'il is Me'il. Kalil Techelet. Kalil Techelet, when we saw the Kohen, it's, it's a very strong color. We see this Kalil Techelet. Do we have Kalil Techelet uh, when it comes to the Mishka? So the answer is no, not in Vayakel uh, Pekudei, but there is a place where you see the Khalil Tchelet, and that's in Bamidbar. At the end of Parashat Bamidbar, after we counted everyone and we're tired and we're not noticing anything, suddenly at the end of Bamidbar, there's a description, how do you take the Mishkan and go from one place to the other? And suddenly we see this. How do you take the Aron? Come the Kohanim and cover the Aron with what? With the Parochet, 
הוא בא אהרון, הוא בניו נמצא במחנה, והורידו את פרוכת המסך וכיסו בה את הארון. We're covering the ארון of the פרוכת, which is made מעשה חושב. What do we put on top of this? ונתנו עליו כיסוי אור תחש. We, ha- we have to have something to cover everything, so if there's rain or dust, it won't get ruined. And then, ופרסו בגד כליל תכלת מלמעלה. It took me many years to notice this, that if I would have been in the desert, I would know where the Aron is walking, because there was one bundle which was covered in Kalil Tachalet. One bundle, and that's the bundle of the Aron. All the others, you will see, they also have Bad Kalil Tachalet, also the Menorah and the Shulchan, but The bad clear threat is underneath. You put it inside a bigger case. So there's just one place where you see it as clear threat. Exactly like when I meet the Kohen Gadol and I see his me'il. Also, the Aron has a similar me'il. So what did I try to show you here? That the Aron and Aharon HaKohen are mirror images of one another. The most inner part of our own Kohen is the, of uh, the Mishkan is the outer part of our own Kohen and vice versa. So if I go back, what do we see here? There is a connection, I think a very strong visual connection and functional connection and connection and, and words to, to the extent that, I, that I'll dare to say that our own Kohen and the Mishkan are actually the same thing only Upside down, okay? I'll repeat this. The Kohen Gadol, he's an upside down image of the Mishkan. Um, I'm gonna ask you soon that I convince you, but, but of course there's another question. If this is true, what does this mean? So I'm stopping the share of the screen because this is, this is where I wanted to take us. Um, and I'm asking you, A, did I convince you? Because I, I think this is right. The Kohen is true at a bite. Yes, the Kohen Agadol, the big days they have, the Kohen Agadol are exactly true at a bite. They're true at a bite, echad lechad. The Choshen is their own, only to show you, it's, it's like their own is walking in front of you. And then the is, is like the meal of their own. And also the, the most inner, parts of the Kodesh Kodashim, everybody sees them all the time on the body of Aron Kohen. And when you see the Kruvim, the Kruvim are here, and Tisa Zahav is here. And Ketavnit Abay, to Parochet Ha'edut Mare Kohen, when you see Mare Kohen, you actually see the Mishkan. Okay, so you're giving up. Did I convince you? If you're convinced, we can think. Okay, so, so now I'm opening this to thought. What does this mean? What is God telling us? What are these parashot telling us? That, that, that actually we have, two, we have two pieces working together, actually saying the same thing, only upside down. So what is this upside down? So I see one idea here, um, but, but, but I want to say, I, I always like to, t- to take, let, let's take 10 seconds, okay, to think. And, and, and I, would, I would love if, the, if, is it possible not only to write in the chat, but if people will actually say what they think, I think that's better. Is that okay, Dvil? Yes, yes, yes. If okay. anyone wants to say anything, use the hand raise feature. And we have five minutes left for the session. I can't see you guys well, so how will I change my view? Yeah, I'm changing the view for me. I wanna see gallery view. Okay, so, 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 so how do you understand this? It has to be a meaning of some kind. The students of YCT, who is the speaker amongst you? I need to rush about pen, not to be tough. Yes, students of YCT. 
we're all talking. We have like a little harusa here. But, okay, so, uh, so what do you say? So, Elon, what were you saying? Oh, I was just saying how it's it, it could maybe uh, personalize the Mishkan uh, in the sense that uh, sometimes uh, Jewish practice or, or institutions or, or buildings, you know, can seem uh, at times a, a cold or, or, or distant, and it's kind of hard to connect to them, uh, especially if you're if you're a stranger to it. You know, if you see if you see a mizbeach, but you know you don't feel that connection to it, then it doesn't do anything for you. But uh, if you see that symbolized uh, on a, on a human being. You know, not not to not to idolize the Kohen Gadol, you know, but to sort of say, you know, oh, I I feel the connection now. There's a human that's connected to it. Maybe maybe that's the connection. Maybe that's the importance. Well, thank you. A very interesting point, and, and and I'll try to take it a little further in a moment. I just want to hear more ideas. I think it's a very crucial point that 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 the Mishkan is just clothes, right? Like the, there's the Kohen Gadol, and he's wearing clothes. So, so if you're right, it's not only personalizing, maybe it's also saying that also the Mishkan is closed for something. It's not the thing. It, 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 it's just uh, an outer shell. Mm -hmm. I think it's very much connected to what you said. It's not only personalizing, it's, it's actually saying that there is something there in the Mishkan, which is not the Mizbech. It's not the Mizbech. Everything here is around. I don't know, maybe maybe it's the clothes of God. I don't know if I'm saying something that makes sense, but but there is something here. Okay. I see. Last, last comment from uh, Ilana Lubin. Um, okay. Did, Ilana? Um, she says, Nirali shize kashor la tchuta de la tata. Vitaruta del tata, vitaruta del eila. There are two movements. Uh, in uh, Kabbalah, uh, also described in the Hasidut many times, some things come from God to us. For example, Yitziat Mitzrayim, right? God took us out. We did nothing. And other things come from bottom up. Uh, for example, Purim. Purim is Am Yisrael, right? The Esther and Mordechai are doing something from bottom up. So maybe, maybe that's, uh, that, that there are two movements here. One thing is that Aharon Kohen, he's us. He does things upwards and the Mishkan is God and it comes down. So definitely this could be showing us that there are two movements going together at the same time. And now there is another commentary here, David. Um, can you say it? Can you say it in your own words? Is that okay? I, I can read, you can all see it on the chat that, 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 that there's an electric current. That, there is a feeling of animation in the Mishkan. The Mishkan is not, the Mishkan is not a Vodazara, as we know. There's something else inside there. It's not the clothes, it's not the Bagadim, it's not the Zahav. Everything is covering something else. Okay, so in truth, this is the, the place where we should, if, if we would be in Seder and Shira, I would send you now to Seder and, 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 and think what this means and look for proof for, it, for your ideas. I've heard other ideas also, but I'm summing up what we see. That mostly I claim that there is a connection and actually Bigde Kuna are in fact the Mishkan on a person walking and the most secret part of the Mishkan is the most obvious part in the Kohen Gadol. So that was the proof in the Psukim and now we're asking why, what does this tell us? So, so we had a few options and some of them really spoke about the fact that the Mishkan is not Abu Dazara and we always feel that there is something else there. This so something else is some kind of a, a, something as complex as a human being. Uh, and, and maybe we have to understand this, that if we want to meet God, it's not in the Mishkan. It's what's inside the Mishkan. So, uh, so that's all, Bezrat Hashem. Uh, who knows, maybe you'll have, if you have more understanding what this means, I, I would always love to hear because I've heard many things and I'm still on a search to understand the deeper meaning of Vigde Kuna and 
and the Mishkan.